this is a real life event. And you say, well, the title of this is murder. Correct. This is real. This is not made up. This is not in a book. Before I have to read what I have to read, let me tell you, we've been at the farmer's market in Daytona Beach for six to seven years. Tracy started it. But that's not what the subject's about. And they moved to Mongolia Avenue between Beach and Palmetto Avenue. I'd say about a year. Maybe a year. And we've been preaching at this event and the entire farmer's market, we've been there for six to seven years. Uh, at the present location, there was a March and April where we weren't there because of health concerns. And then off and on because of health. But we've been there for, for these years preaching the gospel. And you can get our link on our Hayward family website of the street preaching. And I preach about heaven, I preach about hell, I preach the gospel, I preach about Jesus Christ, I preach how to be saved, religion can't save you, church. Listen to the videos. Most of all the videos are there. So, on April 21st, not, excuse me, August 21st, last Saturday, a murder happened. And I'm calling it murder because that's what the charges are. In the very early hours, I'm going to leave out the names. They Daytona Beach, Florida. A homeless person is accused of killing another in downtown Daytona Beach, according to the police department. Officials with the Daytona Beach Police Department said this person, I'm not going to give no name, was arrested Saturday morning after dispatchers received a call around 12.40 a.m. from a witness who said walking through the area of Mongolia Avenue just west of Beach Street. That's where we are. That's where we've been for about a year now. This, I don't know the exact location, but this is the place where we sit, and I can no longer stand, and I preached the gospel. When they saw the person standing over the victim. Who was motionless on the ground. When officials arrived at the scene. They found the victim. They said he's in his 50s. Whose name has not been released. With sufficient injuries to his face. And a belt around his neck according to the department. Because the man wasn't breathing, first responders tried to conduct life-saving measures on him, but were unsuccessful. The, man, the victim was pronounced dead at the scene. Now this is Channel 6 News I'm reading. Uh, there's been no motive for the attack. The person has been arrested and is at the jail on second-degree murder charge, police said. This is where we are. This is where I preach. For the wages of sin is death. This is where I say, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is a vapor. Everyone that is born will die unless the rapture will happen. It sounds like it's pages out of a novel, but this is this event happened where we are weekly. And it saddens me. Because there's a picture of the person arrested, and Rachel and I believe we've seen this person. And we know a lot of homeless, we know a lot of people in the area. There is no name, no picture. And when the guy is a regular in the area, I know he's heard the gospel by us. 
Probably maybe received a gospel track from Rachel. And in wee hours before the farmer's market even opened, 5 or 6 or 7 a.m., right in the area where we are, on the road where we're at, we've been there for a year. A man died. And a man was arrested for murder. The Bible says, Behold, now I am old, and know not the day of my death. That guy wasn't really old. Wherefore, as one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, so death passes unto all men, for all have sinned. It breaks my heart as a street preacher that this has happened where my ministry grounds are and I've got to wonder because the police department today are burying one of their police officers that was shot in the head he died and I've got to wonder Saturday morning the police officers that were there are they or were they were they any of the police officers that dealt with us who tried to shut us up by people calling and complaining. By the farmer's market calling up saying, we don't want that guy there. We don't want him to preach to God. He's too loud. And yet death has happened. That man on the street where we preach, on August 21st in the wee hours of the morning, he went to heaven by Jesus Christ or he went to hell by rejecting Jesus Christ. And I know if he is a regular or he's been in that area during the farmer's market while we are there, I know that man has heard the gospel. He didn't hear no silly nonsense about come to church. He didn't hear any silly nonsense you know, about the 666. We preach the gospel. The very first death in the Bible in the world was recorded a murder. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and came to pass that they were in the field. That Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And God said, Now thou art cursed from the earth, which opens her mouth and received thy brother's blood from thy hand. I don't know what happened that night. There's not enough details. But there was a belt around the guy's neck. I don't know if the guy was saved. I don't know if the guy was lost. I don't know what the circumstances are. I don't know who the victim was. But Saturday morning, a person, last Saturday morning, there's one, only one or two aspects. We are confident, I say, to be rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Or the rich man also died and was buried, and, he looked, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, mm -hmm. being torments. And it sounded like the guy was a homeless man, so he wasn't rich. Rich or poor, rejection of Jesus Christ, you end up in hell. What if that guy had gotten one of the gospel tracks? What if that guy has heard my preaching? And at some point, that gospel track, or the preaching, or he visited the church, or a proper Christian witnessed the gospel to that man. I don't mean the church. Come to my church. And what if that man believed? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You hear that very often in my preaching at the farmer's market. I'm not sure if it was quick death, it was a painful or suffering death. But it was a death. Heaven opened up her doors or hell opened the gates. 
several hours before we arrived and sat down because of my health conditions and no one was there to, I don't know if this had to do with no one being at the farmer's market only three booths and still I preached the gospel not knowing what happened at the wee hours in the morning I did, I did not read about this too much later in the afternoon Rachel had gone off to work and I read the headlines like oh wow What if God called us, and I, I, listen, if I'm boasting myself, I, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. But what if we were there at that farmer's market for that man to hear Jesus Christ? And what if he was saved? What if he got saved the preaching of Jesus Christ? What if he was already saved and he was one of the ones that enjoy us preaching Jesus Christ? He may have been one of the ones that come up and hey, I really like what you're doing. But a body, soul, and spirit we preach weekly. The body died. They took up the, the body and buried it. The spirit, the breath, returned to God. Who knows the spirit of man that goes upward? The spirit goes back to God. Or the soul that went to heaven by Jesus Christ or went to hell by rejecting Jesus Christ that man was either a husband we don't know we don't know if he was a father but we do know he was a son and believe me I do no disrespect to the family of that man I pray for that family as much as the family of Adam and Eve got the news because Eve knew her son was killed. Because later on when she had when she had the child, she said, this would replace the son that Cain killed. Before the farmers market again, five AM, six or AM or seven, a man at the location of where the farmer where the farmers market is. Where we preach the gospel went off into eternity. And we had a vendor Saturday, as he always does, he complained. You know, when somebody goes, hey, what's this guy doing? What, what? Uh, you know, you don't have to listen to him like I have to listen to him every week. And that vendor, you know, his idea is when we die, that's it, it's done. There is no afterlife. I talked to the guy. There's a guy that died on the very location where we're at. He would tell you, hey, there is a heaven. Come. Or there is a hell. Don't come. Now, I don't know if the people at the farmer's market knew about this. I don't know if that's why there were so few. I know when we arrived at, I think, 8.30, there was no, oh, 8 o'clock, 8, between 8.30, I know there was no police presence. I'm not sure if there was any police there when the farmer's market or they got a phone call. But by the time we arrived, it was like nothing ever happened. And there was no chalk mark or anything. If there was, I didn't see any. But I wasn't looking. I was expecting a death. But you know, one of the things I preach, life is quick. We know you could die today. That man did. I say all the time to people, well, you know, come to church, come to church. What if you died on Saturday? This guy, what if he was invited to come to church Sunday morning? And what if he was going to go to church Sunday morning? He never made it. This is why we need to go out with the gospel like Jesus said. Go in all the world and preach the gospel because people are dying. Now, because the farmer's market only had three vendors, 
and they left early. We were going to leave early because Rachel had to go to work, but they packed up like 10 o'clock. So we left early. And we passed by a graveyard every time we come home. And I said to myself, there'll be a funeral. I told Rachel, there'll be a funeral, not knowing what had happened that morning. And sure enough, we drove by. There wasn't a funeral, but there were two tents, two canopies waiting for a funeral. Every week that we pass by that, that cemetery, there's a funeral, and that graveyard does not fill up. I don't know how. I don't know why those things that cemeteries, graveyards, you know how many people are buried. They never get full. You figured by now with all the people in the world, there'll be nothing but cemeteries. You would think, people would think about, hey, death is coming. They think about death insurance. My heart is broken because I don't know who this guy is. I hope that we were an influence to him to believe on Jesus Christ. And I hope that if he's in hell today, he had gone to hell by rejecting the gospel that we preach. Death happens. We need to stop the nonsense and we need to preach the gospel.